G'day and welcome to my channel. Now look, uh, some time back I started this kit and if you remember I set myself a 48 hour challenge to see if I could build this kit in one weekend because I've never done that sort of thing, I've never done one of those challenges. So I decided this looked easy enough, I'd have a go and see if I could do it for myself. Well, it didn't quite go to plan and if you've seen those videos you'll know why. If not, go back and have a look. Now, I have moved on and I have got a lot done and in this video I hope to complete it. So let's get you up to speed. Now when I left at the end of the second video, at the end of the 48 hour challenge which never happened, it was black. It was pre-shaded, it was black. And then after that I decided it's not going to be the red one, it's not going to be the red baron red one, no it was too, just too much drama over that. So I decided to do one like Raven's um, Fokker and he apparently, although there is some debate about this, had a blue version. I thought, oh, that sounds good. And I found a replica, and I decided I would mirror the replica, because how could you go wrong if you weren't building the actual World War I aircraft? You were simply just building a model of the replica, and that's what I did. So um, I painted it dark blue to start with, and then I got the lighter color blue, which is the color of the replica, and I sprayed that on, and then I did a little trick where I sort of gently sanded back the light blue to expose the dark blue underneath, which gave me sort of all the rib lines on the wings and a few lines on the body. And this gave me a whole weathering effect, which um, I'm pretty pleased with. And, you know, it may not be entirely accurate, but it kind of gives me the look I want to show all that, um, that ribbing off. So once that was done, I managed to get some assembly done and um, get the, um, the basic body, the colours I wanted. So we pick up the action <laughs> when I start assembling the wings and um, they weren't that hard to put together. And then I get onto some fiddly bits and a few other things and a bit of cursing and swearing, <laughs> but it all gets done. So without further ado, here is the final instalment of my Fokker triplane. So here we have a little Fokker <laughs> and I've got the, um, the wings on and I've finally got the um, that lovely little engine in there and it rotates. So when we put the propeller on it'll rotate and the motor will rotate. And it's a, it's a really cute little engine that the detail is actually quite good. Quite happy with that. And just something to watch out for when you're building the um, machine guns up because you don't get the option you have to use the PE. You have to roll the cowl around which comes up really nicely. And they've got a tool for it. See one's a little rolly tool which is rather nice. It's in the sprue there. I don't even think I used it. I didn't sort of realise afterwards, I went, oh no. So they give you a little rolly tool, but I just rolled it. I found something the right sort of size and shape like I normally do and rolled it on. And um, the machine guns come up a tree. Very nice, their little jackets on. But a um, couple of things of, that are tricky. This end piece here, well, mine isn't actually the correct plastic part. That's, um, that's a bit of PE stuck on there. And I'll explain why. And, I, and something to note here too is there are little hooks at the back here. See those? Little hooks. Okay. And this is all very important. And there's um, these big drop down pins here. And there's, um, there's smaller pins in there as well. Okay, so let me explain why that's all so significant. Back here in the uh, instructions, and they want you to put part A20 on there when you're assembling these guns and put the magazines on everything. Yes, you could do that, but if you don't get it absolutely perfect, there is no way in Hades you are ever going to get that machine gun in those tiny holes and, because they don't tell you this to way down here, those, remember those little curvy little locating pinny things? They've got to sit down there, in there. There's a bar that runs across there and that clicks onto that. Now, this is dragon for you, you know, as usual. Um, so be wary of that. Way down here it tells you that's where that clicks in. So moving right along after you've got that all fitted and you've got your wings on. That wasn't too hard. Putting in those pieces of um, photo etch stays and the click of the winds wasn't that hard. What I did was I mounted them in the top wings first and I also mounted these stays as well in the top wing. All right? So everything was cemented into the top wing or super glued in. And then I could rest it using gravity on the middle wing and see how it would fit. And then I could basically push everything into place, use my Tamiya Thin to actually glue and glue those those plastic stays, let that set, and then my photo etch um, frames here, they were sitting in the holes where they weren't they weren't glued, I could just use a toothpick and tap in some of my 
slow setting zap glue and everything went together really easy in fact I, I worried that would be difficult but it wasn't you have to put the rigging in we will do that later I'm leaving all the rigging and do it all in one bit same with this light tiny little um, hinges here which is going to require um, rigging as well I'll do all of that in one hit uh, motor assembly piece of cake went together really well except for one thing part B3 my B3 was solid <laughs> There was no hole down the middle of it, which is what you need. It needs a hole right down the middle of it because it's a tube. It's supposed to be a tube and the rod of the um, sticking out the back engine goes through that tube and cements a little B2 here, which is then um, lost inside the body. And B3 gets cemented to the body. And the theory is that if the tube is cemented to the front cowling here, right, but the, the engine's rod is through there and it's it's locked off with that other part at the end then it is free to rotate which is what happened with these planes the actual motor would spin because the propeller gets glued on there right so the whole motor spins around didn't know that that's how it stays cool it just rotates isn't that incredible so the whole body motor spinning around like crazy all the time but that's how it stays cool and that's how it works and there you go all right so what I've got to do here is the undercarriage and I'd already prepared and um, and got that all ready to go it's already been weathered and painted that was that was easy it was it was very easy to paint I even just hand painted on the wheels this time they didn't bother masking um, you know hand painted on the tires there's a nice ridge there I was able to very slowly with some with some um, slightly thinned um, black stonerys and I actually just painted all those on not a problem now you get a little part which is the stay right and again, it, it looks fairly easy. It looks just as easy as last time. That's going to click into there. Right? No problems at all. They make these holes nice and big. So that should CA glue into there without any effort at all. all right? it's, it's, it's a really good fit. I'm happy with that. And on the other side, you've got, um, you've got locating holes at the front, at the back, when the, in the middle of the wing. And then at the front, you don't. <laughs> No, you've got to drill them. So you've got to get this just right. Let me see if I can get this around the right way. Um, so you have to make your own holes. And they don't tell you that. So that's how your stay is going to go. If it doesn't, it'll fall off. Yeah. All right, so your stay is going to go in there. Now, I drilled that hole. I had to. Because good old dragon. Oh, gee, they're, they're great, aren't they? And I should have looked ahead. And you know the problems I've had with this kit and the stress I, I was under. I sort of hadn't really planned it as well as I've done other kits. Here, silly, sneakily hidden away, is a, oh, oh, and by the way, you need to drill a one millimeter hole there. <laughs> Good on you, dragon. So what I did, because you've got to figure out where the bloody thing goes, and there's absolutely no indication whatsoever, is um, with my part cut out, I'll show you that in a sec, you've at least got the back locating hole, and then you can sort of, Get in there and you can see where it's going to go. And once you see where it's going to go, it's a simple matter of marking with a pencil. Alright, so whether I can do this on camera without making a god awful cock up of it, who knows? Oh, look, there we go. So we know it's going to be there. And I've made it so that it's the same distance in as out so now I've got my straight line I know that it it needs to be the same now you wouldn't just stick your drill on there and start going because you know what's going to happen you put it on that's right and at this late stage of the game you have to be really careful what you push against because you're already half built the thing there's lots of little fraggle of stuff on there good on your dragon so what I do is I've got my scribe tool which is just surprisingly a corner of the coal holder that's broken and I've made sure it's filed fairly sharp on the tip so what I'll do is I'll now I've got my line, so I know where it's got to be, is I can gently work the point in. At least this plastic's really soft. And there is my draw point. Okay, and that's exactly where I need it. Exactly where I need it. Now I can test that so that if it's slightly out, because that, that point is going to, should be smaller than the hole I need. So let's have a look. Um, oop, which way does it go? Which way does it go, Harry Houdini? I don't know. Yeah, at least these are fairly easy to figure out which way they go because one side's got like a flat pointy thing and one side's got a curvy pointy thing. So you um, you can figure them out. So with that one in there, that one in there, 
Yeah, it needs to go just out a tiny bit. All right, I'll do that. I'll push that out a bit, and I can do that when I'm drilling, because if I drill, slightly pointing out, and you don't need much, that's it. Okay, so I'm probably going to have to use a little bit of filler and a little bit of faffing around afterwards, but oh well. It's going to be hidden underneath there, so, you know. So that will now fit exactly into there, and it does. So yeah, just watch out, you've got to drill those two holes. If you'd looked ahead, as you should do with all Dragon Kits, as I always say, look ahead and check the instructions and, you know, but, um, as usual, do as I say, not as I do. Um, if you'd looked ahead, then you probably would have wanted to do that even way back before painting time. You know, that would have probably been the best time to do that one. Okay, now I've got another little bit of photo etch here to cut out. And if you'd seen in the previous um, episodes, I'd struggled with this bloody silver PE. It's been painted. I've already painted that a sky bluey colour. But since then, I've got these shear cutters, right? Or micro shears, whatever the hell they are. Now, if you saw me last time, I was struggling, struggling, and trying to do with razor blades. Oh, what a nightmare. Watch this. Right up against the part, exactly where I need it. And... Voila. And again, right up against the part. Probably going to be easier if I go that way. Right up against the part. Using the tip of these wonderful little micro cutters. Done. And if you'd watch my graph spray video. Now that is going to require a puff teeth of sanding. That's it. So easy. So easy. All right, so, or sanding, filing. So it's pretty tough stuff, this. And I will have to paint it again, but that's okay. Most of it's painted. I used, end up using um, some Tamiya bloody primer on it, and then the colour. Well, there you go, okay? That's all I did. Most effortless PE cutting and filing that I've ever done. Those cutters, they're Zeron cutters with an X, they are fantastic. And if you struggle with PE and you're trying to do it with the, um, the razor blade and everything, which, which you can do, but then having a god-awful time of it and everything's bending and going crazy, have a look at these. Did they bend? No. Look at that. There is no warping, no bending. That thing just went in like scissors to paper. Schnip. And even though this is that damn bloody um, zinc and eel stuff, it just cut beautifully. So there we go. That's... Um, that's the stays cut. I'll um, super glue those in, or CA glue them in with my zap now, and then I'll be able to get that bottom assembly in for um, the wheels. Now, as I did when I put the um, struts on the wings, I would um, just glue one side wait till it's set and hold it there with my hand and then glue the other side and all the time keeping a light pressure on with my hands. This is going to be a little tricky to put a clamp on. If you've got a clamp that fits there, good luck to you. I don't. I've got hands and hands are pretty uh, pretty handy stuff. <laughs> so I'll just sort of hold that for a while even though super glue sets pretty quickly I know. Slow zap takes a little longer. It'll take really a few minutes till it's absolutely set but just to make sure that's rock solid I've just got it in my hand and I will make sure it's nice and firmly cemented in. But look, she's starting to take shape. She's got her wheels on now. She's starting to look like a real fucker. <laughs> all right, so all I've got to do now is get that cowling on there and then I can pop the propeller on and um, and get the tailplane on there. I've got to put a couple of little, um, uh, a couple of little, uh, what do you call them? Little, little hingy brackety things. Oh, I don't know. Photo edge crap. Yes, there's one of those got to go in the back there. Anyhow, I'll um, get those on. We're back in a sec. Here we go. I have got lots done. I've got those little tiny, you won't even see them. I'll do some photos later. Tiny little hinges that go in there. And I've even got the photo etch on there. Let's see if we can actually... Look at that. See those tiny little bits of photo etch? And there's tiny bits of wire there for the rigging. Now, this wasn't that hard. It, uh, it looks a bit tricky, but it isn't. And in fact, I've got a whole lot of rigging done here and in here. And Dragon made this very simple by providing the wire. The wire that came with the kit. I think I just got 
two rolls of these things. And um, that wire sprung out nice and straight. And then Dragon gave you very clear instructions. Like here's for the um, underneath where the wheels are. Or oh, this is no, this is both machine guns. Um, very clear instructions. 27 millimeters. Or you just lay the wire down on there, and then um, you know lay the wire down, get in with something sharp. I'm using my little um, Zuron um, little cutters, little micro cutters, and cut your bits of wire, and they fit. They fit perfectly. Dragon actually got this spot on. So putting in all that rigging was really easy. Now another thing I've done, have a look at that propeller. Now I use a tricky little method here of um, using thin strips of tape. Um, have a look at this pic. And these thin strips of tape um, went over the base coat of a light brown and then I painted it on a slightly darker brown and then I took it all off and weathered it. That's a result that really pleased me. Now, doing these um, little wire things, I thought I'll show how easy it is to get these little wire um, pieces of rigging on your model. Now, Dragon provides fairly clear instructions how the rigging is done and, um, and they give you the lengths. Now, the front was fine, all the, the rigging I did here and the rigging for, for below, that all went in perfectly. There was no problem at all. Any of those, all the lengths, as Dragon has laid out, were perfect. Now, there is a little trick with the wire that you need to bend the end of it to fit into the tiny little hinge, and that really wasn't that hard. In fact, I just measured off exactly the, the lengths here, as I said, and then bent oh, one or two millimetres to get that little hook that went into the bracket there for this, this well that'd be an aerolon, wouldn't it, in that, um, in there. And, and that was really easy, and they fitted in perfectly, they fall into little holes, I really had no issue. I thought, wow, this rigging is a piece of cake. Until I cut to the tail. Now the tail eh, started to have a few little problems. Um, one, these are smaller hinges, and they're a little bit tricky for the wire to get in. You've literally got to actually file the end tips of your wire to get them into the little, um, the little hinges there. Now, again, they've given you the measurements. A and B are fine, right? A and B are fine. They're going to go from there to there. Let me show you. I think I've done one. I've done one there. That's B I've done. So A and B are fine. They go ding, 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 ding. No problems at all. That fits perfectly. But when you get to C, in my kit at least, and this is getting back to kind of thing that Dragon does to you, C here, right, is a long one. It should go from this hinge through the tail plane then across to the body okay so that would go from this tiny little hinge here through that little hole out that hole at the back there across and into the body and that would be all well and good if there was actually a hole ah there is it <laughs> now i sort of thought oh maybe i could drill it out but at this late stage with everything in the way it is I can't get my pin vise in there, and I don't really seem to have a, uh, a drill bit that small. Um, I've got some pretty small drill bits, but I don't have one that I could get in there now without really wrecking this. So if you've got this kit, it might be an idea to have a look at that first and decide if you want to hot needle that through or um, drill that through. Because of that, I'm going to have to cut the wire in two sections, one for the top and one for the bottom. Well, that's not really a problem, and I won't be able to use Dragon's lengths. Now what I've done is I've taken a long piece, well a piece as long as I need, in fact it was the last piece left on the first roll of wire, so I've already put that little L-shaped band at the end, I just did that with a folding tool, I simply put the wire in the folding tool, sorry about my wobbling, can't be helped, just look at the state of my nails, goodness me, anyhow um, I've already put that little L-shaped band in, so we've got that, and that allows me, as I said, to basically hook it in to that little hinge and that all works fine, it's really easy. I mean, you know, I don't know, the only rigging I have done before was much larger balsa wood, um, basically biplanes. last one I built was a Newport, I think, I think I was in my early 20s. And um, they were ones that you put motors in and they flew. And with those we rigged them with number 10 cotton. So rigging um, scale model, I don't think I ever built a plastic biplane as a kid, we always built planes, they flew, they were real ones, you know, balsa ones. So that fits in there nicely, but obviously it's going to be too long. So really it's not that hard to figure out and cut. Now what I've done is, I've already done the one on the other side, 
he is using very carefully <laughs> a um, you guys call him Sharpie, I call it a felt pen. Here's our mark on the wire where I need to cut. And then hopefully I should be able to find that mark Oh, it gets a bit wobbly and if things don't ping around now this is the tricky bit once it's small it's that little bit harder to fit back into that that little hinge. It can be done. Um, I tried doing it with tweezers and I really didn't have much success because um, the damn thing kept spinning around inside the tweezers. So I still find the best method is by hand and by eye. Of course you've got to use your eyes, haven't you, Harry Dean? That's what it's all about. So just bear with me here. You need to be able to see what you're doing. And there we go. Don't fall out. And then that. And it's just a touch too long. So that's okay. I'll now trim that. All I need to do is trim a tiny bit off. And this is often where when I'm cutting, like the rule always with cutting is Cut it a little bit longer than you need, just to, you know, if you're not sure, cut it a little bit longer because you can always go back. But if you cut it too short, you can't make the wire long again. You have to start from scratch. So there you go. All I've got to do now is cut a little bit off the end of that and that should then fit in there perfectly. And there it is. Just add a tiny trim and um, the wire just falls in nicely. And that's, that's fairly easy. This is um, actually been one of the things I was worried about, but it's turned out to be fairly easy to do on this Dragon Kit. Um, and so just the lengths here you had to work out for yourself. But as, as I showed, not that hard to do. Just um, take your time, have a bit of patience. And having those little hooks in the end there actually makes that quite easy to um, clip the wire into those little hinges and then drop it down into the slots. So I'll keep going. I've only got, um, I've got um, just the, um, the little ones to go at the bottom here and they're all pretty well uh, measured. So I shouldn't take me too long to get all of those done. And then um, and she's finished, basically. The assembly's completely done. I'll be able to get the decals on. And um, it should look pretty snappy. Well, here we go. The fucker is finished, yes. Um, she's all done. Yeah, I've got all the decals on her. Okay. She's absolutely finished. Um, everything's done. Both sides. Yes, got to do the bottom. Don't forget to do the bottom. And um, for all the drama of that tiny little cockpit area, you can't even bloody see it, can you? No. No, you can't see it. <laughs> yes, River Counters. Um, but anyhow, she is painted up uh, correctly to match that replica um, that I mentioned at the beginning. And she's probably a, um, a rendition of the Raven Fokker. Although, as I said, it's a bit liberal. And there's a bit of debate on that. Now, a couple of things I did um, after the decals, I put a little bit of a, a pin wash on just to help bring out um, some, some details. You, you'll see that in the photos at the end. It's a bit hard to show what's in my wobbly hands here. But um, basically, I did that, and then I was going to paint the um, brass wires black, but all the photos I found show that the rigging was, was always metal, it was always silver, it was just, you know, metal wires. So I couldn't find anywhere where they were black. So the river counters will probably get upset again, but I painted all my rigging silver. Because <laughs> that works for me, and that meant I didn't have to repaint those hinges because it was getting a little bit too tiny for me to see. But anyhow, she is done, right? I'm, I'm happy with my Fokker. She's, um, all finished and um, I have the decals on her and that has really um, you know that's that's done the trick that's 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 finished her off so well whew, gee goodness me 48 hour challenge <laughs> hopeless but um, as far as a model that I pushed through and got finished I'm happy so I'll put a little montage at the end here a few photos so you can see in detail sort of how it's finished up there's, um, there's still things wrong with it, but overall, I'm really happy with this kit. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope it inspires you just to keep going with any model that you might be sort of feeling, oh, it's just not happening, you know, and people are putting me down. Don't let that happen. Just put it aside, come back to it when you're ready, and you never know, you might get a final result that then you can be proud of too, just like me. All right, well, that's it for now. 
Enjoy the photos. Goodbye from Australia and it's Haru from Harry Udini.